to the 2018 Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Tonight from McKeithen Stadium in Gainesville, Florida, day two in our winner's bracket matchup, Florida Gators taking on the Jacksonville Dolphins. Let's see how these two teams got to day two in the winner's bracket Friday. Florida at home, day baseball against Columbia. They broke out the bats in a big way. 10 extra base hits and a 13-5 victory. Will Dalton first home run in 17 games. Jacksonville like the Gators coming from behind. Sam Armstrong, home run in the fourth inning. That got the Dolphins going. Later in the frame, Corey Garastazu, a home run of his own. Armstrong delivered a game, a go ahead base hit with an RBI in the fifth inning. Earlier today, Florida Atlantic, their season continuing into Sunday and day three here in Gainesville. They knocked out Columbia with an 11 2 victory. Lions go home from Gainesville 0 2. Hi, everyone. Alongside former Gator Nick Belmonte, I'm Steve Lennox. We're delighted to have you on board tonight. Jacksonville and Florida. Florida is the visiting team here tonight at McKeithen Stadium. What did you take away from these two teams with their victories on Friday, Nick? Yeah, for Kevin O'Sullivan's team, he showed you why they're the number one national seed. As you said, 13 hits, 10 extra base. They came out smoking, had good relief pitching. They got Brady Singer going tonight. And for Chris Hayes, his Jacksonville club they did a great job. Good starting pitching, great relief pitching, and just enough hitting. They're going to be tough tonight. Sam Armstrong, one of the bats in the Jacksonville lineup. We saw him in the game one victory against FAU. Provides the pop and can also get on with the base hits, but he's got big power. Well, he does have big power. He, Armstrong, he is strong, exactly. Hit the home run last night, also had a double, three RBIs. They're going to need his bat if they're going to prevail here tonight. And for the Gators, one of the best one-two punches in all of college baseball, 34 count them, 34 home runs between them, 17 each. Look at the night they had last night. Six for eight, eight RBIs. They are smoking hot right now. Brady Singer gets the start tonight for the Gators. We'll take a break when we come back. Florida and Jacksonville and it's going to be time to play ball here in Gainesville. Comfortable night in Gainesville, Florida. We're going to start about an hour late. Game originally slated to start at 7.04 and Florida and Jacksonville meeting both teams 1-0. Jacksonville tonight going with six foot three right hander Spencer Stockton. He gets the start against Singer and the Gators. Yeah, and he pitched here in a midweek game back on the 21st of March. 88, five to 88 mile an hour fastball. Real estate pitcher. Location, location, location. That's what he's all about. An ultra competitive. His dad is former tennis star Dick Stockton. So that's where he gets that in his DNA. And he's a, he's a guy that they know can go out there and get it done. But he got hit around in the midweek game. We'll get into that a little bit later. Lineup for the Gators. Deacon Lippett, the leadoff hitter. India Walton, 3-4 in the lineup. Brady Smith gets his first start in the regional for the Gators. Horvath and Jonah Duran had one of the home runs. He got the start in game one against Columbia. Duran starting behind the plate, catching Brady Singer in a game for the first time this season. Kevin O'Sullivan at the helm of the defending champion Florida Gators. There is Florida's head coach. What a job he's done here at the University of Florida already based on his short tenure here which is 11 years the greatest coach in the history of the University of Florida just based on what he has done. Looking to get the Gators back to Omaha where they'll have an opportunity if they get to Omaha in mid-June to defend their national title would be their fourth straight trip. That would be a school record. Kevin O'Sullivan. And the Gators, the visiting team. That's up on the board. And the outfield wall in left field. Just before the bleachers. Gators in their home dugout but wearing the road grays. And they're ready to hit against Spencer Stockton. Stockton. 13th start overall. Nick mentioned his start here at McKeithen Stadium against the Gators back on March 21. Florida won the game by a score of 10 to 3. Stockton went five innings, gave up six earned runs on nine base hits. And he had a 88 pitch count that night, so that's going to be something interesting to look at as this game unfolds. Lippitt, 299 on the season, including last night's or yesterday's victory against Columbia. Lippitt had one for four and two runs scored. His one base hit an RBI double for the Gators in the victory against the Ivy League postseason tournament champion 
Columbia Lions, who are going home with two losses, losing 13-5 and 11-2 earlier today against Florida Atlantic. Gators played yesterday, had the option. They played the early game, noon start on Friday on day one here in Gainesville. Spencer Stockton goes to work. Lippitt down in the count of ball and two strikes. Leading things off for the Gators here in the top of the first inning. Well, when Stockton faced the Gators back on the 21st of March, Lippitt was just getting back into the lineup. So he was hitting down in the lineup. The leadoff hitter, believe it or not, for first part of the season was Will Dalton. And Lippitt did have a four-hit game, including a double in that 10-3 victory. Out on strikes. Bartoscioni throws down to first to complete the strikeout, one down. So important for Stockton to get through this first inning on skates. Settle the nerves. Big crowd here on hand. He's facing the number one national seed who beat him earlier this year, but looks like a little change up right there. He gets him the chase. And that anticipation had to build with the hour delay at the start. Oh, no question. One down, base is empty for Nelson Maldonado. Maldonado 0 for 3 with two strikeouts in yesterday's win against Columbia. But he walked two times and scored two runs. And Maldonado won't call him the human rain delay, but he'll be up there for lengthy <laughs> he at bats. He will. And it's just by fighting off pitches, fouling them off. Stockton into the wind. Misses outside. One ball, one strike count on Maldonado. We were saying Maldonado is such a throwback guy. It was unusual to see him wear a batting glove last night. Actually, Morton. he did that for like his first at-bat, and then he went without him the right. rest of his at-bat. You had made and had noticed that. Maldonado counting his favor, two balls and a strike. Tom Hart let me know today that he had done a game last year in, in, in Kentucky. Actually, it was this year where he had a couple of home runs wearing the batting glove. Three ball, one strike count. That's it, deep count. This is what he does. He drives your pitch count up. The rest of your ball club gets to see the pitcher's array of pitches early in the ball game. Maldonado flips the bat away, aboard with his third walk of the regional. He is the first base runner of the game. And Jonathan India will come to the plate in the first inning with a runner aboard. And that's a big part of it, too. He gets on base, puts the pitcher in the stretch for the first time in the ballgame to face India and Dalton. Jonathan India, 12 doubles, 3 triples, 17 home runs on the season. India and Dalton tied for the team lead with 17. Goes up aggressive, first pitch swinging. What made India the hitter that he is this year is his ability to work on hitting to all fields. First in slugging, first in on base. Top three and home runs. Time called for at home plate, Ephus pitch. In the midweek game against Stockton, India flied out to right his first time up, grounded the ball out to third base his second time up, and singled to right his third time up. He faced him three times in that ball game, and it was taken out for a pinch runner. Outside for a ball. Spencer Stockton. Quicker pace last night than Chris Gow, who made the start against Florida Atlantic. Gow got runners on base, and even without runners on base, he was very deliberate to home plate. We were told after the game that was sort of out of character for Gow. And I found out later today that he actually wasn't feeling very well. And that was the reason why he was slow, slowing it down. Chris Hayes said he, he was a little under the weather last night, and that was the reason why early in the ball game. He was taking a lot of time between pitches. Well, he did battle. What a year he's had with great coach Chris Hayes, who's a great player at Jacksonville as well back in the early 90s. 
as a player, made it to two regionals in Omaha and uh, during the course of his playing career. India is showing patience, and the count now two balls and two strikes. Just underway, top of the first. Winner of this game will be in the driver's seat at 2 0. India on Friday named first team All American by Baseball America. Foul tips that one into the glove of Guardacioni. Two strikeouts here in the first for Stockton. Gets him to go after a pitch away. Looked like a, another changeup, a changeup action. He was at 84. His fastball is 80. 5 to 88, so he may have just taken a little bit something off the fastball right there, but he got a nice little run. Maldonado at first, two down, and here is Will Dalton. 35 extra base hits on the season now for Dalton, 56 driven in. Six runs batted in, and the lopsided win yesterday against Columbia. And he got it going from the get go in the very first inning. Came through with an RBI double and was left stranded. Dalton hit a home run in his third at bat against Stockton back on the 21st of March. Two of his home runs against Florida Atlantic or against Jacksonville pitching this season. Pardon me. Two of his 17 had a home run in each of the two games. In Jacksonville, they did pick up a victory here at McKeithen during the regular season. That came in their second trip in. On April 17th, as they picked up an 8 4 win. Stockton trying to work around a walk here in the first inning. Misses upstairs. I remember the Gators not playing with J.J. Schwartz, who was one of the hotter hitters in their lineup. Here's J.J., broken finger, taking it day by day. I mean, his numbers, 325, 12 home runs, 46 RBIs. You know, holds many of the Gator offensive records career-wise. And that's what made Dalton's big day yesterday even bigger because he was really struggling. Fly ball left center field. Samayan settles under it, waits, makes the grab, side retired. Florida, a base runner on a walk, nothing else doing against Stockton. Brady Singer takes a mound for Florida in the bottom of the first. Beautiful night in Gainesville, Florida. Florida and Jacksonville, no score. Brady Singer making the start tonight for Florida. His first start, Nick, since May 11th against Georgia. Yeah, they put him on the shelf, just precautionary there. He won the conference and going into the uh, SEC tournament. But those numbers are real, 93 to 97, quick and quick tempo, and he really controls the game with that tempo. But he's got that wipeout slider and change, and that's what makes him so effective. And also, everything is coming out of that same spot, right around his ear level. Now watch, his array of pitches is coming from the same spot, but where is it? Where is it going? The two-seamer, the slider, the changeup, the fastball, all coming out, going in different directions. And what's interesting right there is the changeup and the slider are the same velocity, and they're going in different directions. Singer, 10 wins on the season, only loss on his record during the regular season here at home against Arkansas on March 23rd was roughed up in that start, giving up six earned runs over seven and a loss against the Razorbacks. Ruben Samayan starting things off for the Jacksonville Dolphins. Here is the lineup for head coach Chris Hayes. DeBrule batting third, Armstrong, big power, batting behind Camacho. Worried about rust early on for Singer? Well, they said his bullpens were really good. I don't, and I haven't, you know, obviously it's early in this ball game, but not necessarily. So mine looks at a strike. Jonah Duran is starting tonight behind the plate. His second straight start in the Gainesville Regional for the Gators. It's his first game action this season with Singer on the mound. He's caught him during bullpen sessions. Towards first base, Smith to the pitcher, covering Samayan retired, one away. Well, he's setting the tempo early. Between the time he got the ball back from the catcher, he was running about seven to eight seconds before he started his next pitch. And it's going to be up to Jacksonville to possibly slow him down. And that's what 
step out of the box. But he, he will set this tempo. Base is empty as Chris Lahane stands in. Let's take a look at Singer early on in this game. I mean, that's that's the delivery we've seen. He looks good. Comebacker. Singer to Smith this time, two away. I mean, he gets a nice drive from his leg, but it, a lot of times hitters are looking for a ball over the pitcher's head, especially with this kind of velo. And it's really going around hat level. I've seen him. He gets in ball games. He gets on runs. He's just totally dominating. Two down, bases empty, no score here in the home first inning. Scott, DeBrule at the plate. DeBrule, one for three with a walk and a run scored in the victory on Friday night against Florida Atlantic. Singer, 2018 SEC Pitcher of the Year. Jonathan India was the Player of the Year in the SEC this year. Kevin O'Sullivan, Coach of the Year. One of the things I think you should look at tonight is how many times Jacksonville gets the leadoff man on. I think that's going to be important for them. Out in front of the plate, Singer to first, and a 1-2-3 first inning. Brady Singer off to a splendid start. We go to the second here in Gainesville, Florida, Jacksonville. No score. Scoreless ball game as we go to the top of the second here at McKeithen Stadium. Steve Lennox, former Gator Nick Belmonte. Jacksonville, 40 wins on the season under second-year head coach Chris Hayes. Jacksonville, a two-seat in a regional for the first time in school history, one of 33 at-large bids. Ended the year 21st nationally in RPI. Check out that clipboard. It's been, that, that, if that clipboard could talk, the back of that thing looks like it's been around since that 72 season. It's got some more stories. Austin Langworthy starts things off here in the second against Spencer Stockton who worked around a one-out walk in the first inning. Austin Langworthy, we mentioned Jacksonville during the regular season, winning here in Gainesville on April the 17th. Langworthy, in relief, took the loss when an inning and two-thirds gave up two earned runs on six base hits. Swings through that offering. Nick Horvath also pitched in that game, went two innings, gave up three earned runs. Langworthy, Reese, and Smith. Five, six, seven, due up for the Gators here in the top of the second inning. Back through the middle of the diamond. That one nearly struck Stockton on the pitcher's mound. Langworthy aboard with our first hit of the ball game. I like how he stays on this. It looked like another changeup going away. Caught a little bit too much of the plate. And one good thing that Austin Langworthy did not do, he didn't pull off it. Langworthy, second hit of the Gainesville Regional. Here's Blake Reese. Reese at second base again for Kevin O'Sullivan and the Gators. Had two base hits, a pair of doubles, and a run batted in. And yesterday's victory against Columbia. And a point to bring up early with Reese, especially Singer. Three ground ball outs, one to the right side. in the bottom of the first inning. Reese was limited in his opportunities on ground balls at second against Columbia, but he did take care of what was hit to him? Yeah, he was scuffling lately with some throws over there. He seems to be handling it fine. He was a guy that back in that game in March against Stockton pulled a home run to right center field. Off speed in for a strike. Dalton, Schwartz, and Reese all homered. And the 10-3 victory for the Gators during the regular season here at home against Jacksonville. Stockton, eight wins, five losses. 17th appearance overall. Had a thumb issue at the beginning of the year. 
and had some outings in relief. Career high 11 strikeouts against Florida Gulf Coast back on April the 14th in a 5-1 victory. 2-1 to Reese, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Just before the start of the season, thumb injury, and that limited him early on to the relief role and midweek starts. Spencer Stockton going the way of college baseball. He's got some athletes in his family. Reese to center field. Samayan so drifting back, makes the grab. Langworthy almost all the way to second, goes back to the bag at first base, one down. Spencer Stockton's dad is Dick Stockton, who back in 1977 was ranked eighth in the world in tennis, in men's tennis. Runner at first, one down, and Brady Smith will stand in for his first at bat of the night. Freshman 269 on the season from Niceville in Florida. Saw Smith two years ago for the USA Baseball 18U National Team Trials in the Tournament of Stars in Cary, North Carolina. Had a couple of opportunities to talk with Brady. And hey, you're from Niceville. Guess what? Scouting report on Brady. He's a nice guy. <laughs> and yes, he does look just like Matt Damon. It's still there two years later. My producer at the time with uh, MLB.com, we'd argue between innings because up close and personal, talking, engaging a conversation, looking Brady right in the eye, there's a resemblance. And my producer thought I was crazy, but it, it had already been documented. He goes by Jason Bourne, or at least at one point he did. I don't know if his Florida teammates call him Jason Bourne or not. I'd call him Will Hunting, maybe. Right now he's hunting for a base hit. Come on, Brady. There you go. Langworthy leadoff base hit. He's at first. Swing and a miss. Two strikes on Brady Smith. Now, Smith gets the start at first base. Two years ago in Cary, North Carolina, he was trying to make the 18U national team as a catcher. And they put him at first base because they wanted to see what he could do with the bat. And they figured, hey, we're going to use a utility guy if we use him on the roster. Let's see if he can play a new position. At that point, he was very new to the first base position. And still a work in progress. Even behind the plate. Through the catcher, Guardacioni, Langworthy will make the turn and hold it second. Well, pitch was the ruling on that. Now an opportunity to not get a run in scoring position. The slider, and it's just too far away. Looks like Guardacioni got to, out there as best as he could. Just yanked on it. Looking to the dugout, looking down at the wrist. RBI opportunity for Smith. Chases a pitch up in the zone. Stockton picks up his third strikeout. Now he changed his eye level, went away, and then fastball up. You can see he just pulled his shoulder, his head follows. Watch, everything's going to fly open here on this one. But it's really hard to hit those balls above your hands, and that's what they were hoping he was going to do, offer at that pitch, and he did. So now Nick Horvath will stand in. Horvath Friday against Columbia, one for four with an RBI and had a sacrifice bunt. Had an odd at bat late in the game against Ian Burns. Swing and a miss, down in the count, nothing in one. There was a runner at third base, and Horvath had the ball come in. Ball went off his bat and hit him in his body and rolled out in front of the plate. He stayed at home plate and was thrown out at first base, but the runner came in from third.
Langworthy at second with two down here in a scoreless ball game in the second. Fly ball left field. Stevens going back. Now comes in a couple of steps, makes the grab, inning over. Langworthy a leadoff single, stranded by Stockton at second. Middle of the second here in Gainesville, no score. Dyke on the ground, he'll come home with it. Rivera tags Robertson, boom! Lippitt with the bases loaded. Deacon Lippitt makes it 5-1, Florida. On the ground to second. And the Gators get their first College World Series championship. Florida looking to defend its national title in 2018. Look at the schools they're trying to join. South Carolina, the last to go back-to-back -back in Omaha, 2010-2011 for the Gamecocks. The Texas Longhorns, the first to ever do it, 1949-1950. Gators looking to join some elite company. Angel Camacho, seven-game hit streak, 79 hits on the season. Starting things off for Jacksonville in the home second inning. Scott Wingo, first base coach for Jacksonville. He was the most outstanding player in Omaha with the Gamecocks in 2011, was part of both championship teams. Yeah, Wingo just was amazing. Player of the MVP of the College World Series. Both offensively and defensively. Bouncer towards first base. Smith will go to the bag himself. Four ground ball outs to open for Brady Singer. One down here in the Jacksonville second. Well, you're seeing Singer. I mean, this is him. I mean, he's controlling the game. They're not getting good swings on him. He's setting the tempo. Gators won the College World Series last year, two games to none against LSU. His last five outings, again, last time he took the mound against Georgia here at McKeithen Stadium on May 11th. Has retired four in a row. Bases empty for Sam Armstrong. Singer picked up the victory in game one of the College World Series finals against LSU in a 4-3 win. Struck out 12. Most by a Florida pitcher in College World Series history. Made two starts in Omaha. Combining for 14 innings, 21 strikeouts, and earning two wins. Was part of the 2017 College World Series All-Tournament team. He's got the accolades and perhaps more to come. Now watch how he does this here. He's going to wait for the, he's going to get ready, set, and then he's going to wait for the hitter to come in. And as soon as the hitter's in the box, then he goes. He's setting the tempo. Up the middle, base hit, out of the reach of the diving second baseman, Reese. And Armstrong collects a first base hit for the Dolphins. Well, that's a guy they need to deliver tonight. Fastball, a little bit of sink to it, stays on it. Big, strong hitter. And Sam Armstrong has a tie here in Gainesville, his dad, Scott. Middle linebacker for the Gator football team in the middle 80s. His third hit of the Gainesville Regional. John Casala at the plate. Two home runs, 15 runs batted in on the season. And takes the first pitch for ball one. And one of the home runs he hit was against the Gators here. The second game they played this season, a midweek game. That was the game that Jacksonville won 8-4. to four. At two hits, the home run, four runs batted in. The victory for Jacksonville in mid-April here at McKeithen Stadium was their first against the top-ranked team in the nation since 2007 when they beat Florida State at home. Speaking of the Seminoles, they are done. Losing today in heartbreak fashion. Sanford knocked them off last night, sending them to the loser's bracket against Mississippi State. They had a two-hour-plus delay because of weather. Bouncing ball towards short. Lippick goes a short way for one. Back to first. Double play. And the inning is over. Armstrong a hit. He raced on the inning ending double play. Singer is off to a terrific start here in Gainesville in his first start since early May. 
No score as we go to the third. Well, we alluded to it earlier today in Tallahassee. Bottom half of the ninth inning. Mississippi State down 2-0 against Drew Parrish and the Seminoles. Elijah McNamee, a three-run home run, came on a two-strike pitch. Mississippi State lost 20-10 against Oklahoma on Friday. Shut out through the first eight innings. Drew Parrish threw 133 pitches. They brought him out after the lengthy delay. Parrish the loss. Seminoles' season is over. Third inning. 9-1-2 to up for the Gators. Jonah Duran stands in against Spencer Stockton. How about that? And by the way, it's the first time tonight someone in this ballpark has said Florida State is done and it hasn't come with great big thunderous applause. But they know about it. Terrific crowd on hand for day two of the Gainesville Regional. Duran homered. And yesterday's victory against Columbia, his first in a Gators uniform. And again, he's getting the start behind the plate, catching Brady Singer for the first time here in 2018. Big, big, strong hitter. We saw it last night. Waves through that offering from Stockton. Duco transfer from Seminole State. That's in Stanford, Florida. little backlash right there. So you want to be a catcher. Watch this. Mm. One catcher to another. Guardacioni appears to be okay taking that off the mask. Four strikeout for Spencer Stockton. Tournament headlines. Casey Mize gets the start tonight against Army who knocked off North Carolina State in Raleigh on Friday. My so far, three innings, one hit. A walk, two strikeouts. Auburn up one nothing on Army West Point. That game is in the fourth inning. North Carolina State did win its game earlier today. So the Wolfpack knocking off Northeastern 9-3. Mize getting the start. He's given up a base hit. And I said it before the game, I dare say Army West Point did not face a pitcher this year with the stuff of a Casey Mize. Taking nothing away from Army, but uh, Mize, who had a no-hitter during the regular season against Northeastern at home, getting the start tonight. Pulled towards first off the bat of Lippitt. He is retired as Camacho goes to the bag. So two down, and Nelson Maldonado. The ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage this weekend on ESPN2, ESPNU, the SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip Around coverage is also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage is available on the ESPN app. Maldonado walked and was left stranded in the first inning. Stockton looking for a third straight scoreless inning and trying to match zeros with Brady Singer. Yeah, how about Stockton? I mean, he has been matching him. He's looked good. Has allowed two base runners so far. The pitch that's been effective for him is that little off-speed pitch running away from lefties, coming into righties. He's getting the Gator hitters to chase after it, and then once they see that, he'll go upstairs with that fastball. Behind two and nothing on Nelson Maldonado. Three and oh the count. What else is new? Maldonado, great eye. Well, remember when Kevin Euclid was dubbed Greek, wa uh, Greek God of Walks? <laughs> I think we've got. Volume two with Maldonado. Taking a strike is over. And a lot of times in this situation, he starts fouling off pitches, but this is a good hitter's pitch here. Keep your shoulder in. If he comes inside, turn on it. 
Takes ball four. Two out base runner. We talked about Casey Mize, that great matchup they had here when Auburn came through. Mize against Singer. Singer got the better of them, and that was the reason right there. Jonathan India, two run homer in that early in that ball game. The week before that start and the matchup between Mize and Singer, we had Auburn Alabama for the second and third games of that series, and um, we had Mize on between innings. And we asked him, have you started preparing for Florida yet? And he said, yep, after last night against Alabama. Well, the three so guys he was already we, in that mode. Yeah, we just mentioned three guys, Singer, India, Mize. They're going to hear their names called Monday. The Keith draft. Laws, latest yep. mock draft is out, 3.0 on ESPN.com. He has Singer going to the White Sox. Runner goes from first. The pitch is up. Throw down to second base. Out at second. Maldonado cut down on the caught stealing. And that ends the inning. Lahane taking the throw from Guarda Sioni. And the two out walk does not come back to bite Stockton. You're watching. The NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. No scores. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. Winner's bracket on day two. Stockton and Singer so far matching zero. Stockton three scoreless. Has walked two batters. And now he sits him by himself in the first base dugout. Singer back out on the mound. Singer gave up a base hit with one out to Armstrong in the second. Promptly erased on a 4-6-3 inning ending double play off the bat of Casala. Corey Garastazu homered his third of the season in last night's victory against Bart Atlantic. Yeah, I was talking to him this morning and I said, you like that pitch down there? And he goes, oh yeah. It was down and in and he hit it scoreboard. And he must have some golf because I heard the conversation. And you said three wood. He said absolutely, or something <laughs> along those lines. Of yeah. <laughs> Back of third, Lippet, with India, falling down, one down. Introducing ESPN Plus, your home for more sports, more schools, more conferences, more ESPN. Stream ESPN Plus exclusively on the ESPN app for just $4.99 a month. Sign up now for ESPN Plus. And why haven't you already, right? Great app. I've got the email for my free trial. Franco Guardacioni. Three home runs and 24 driven in on the season for Franco. Two ball, one strike count. Mize will hear his name early Monday night. First day of the Major League Baseball draft for 2018. Two ball, two strike count on Guardacioni. Singer. Mize and Singer. They'll both hear their names earlier. It might be Casey Mize of Auburn first, then Singer. According to Keith Law. Both are going to be top four draft picks. Three and two on Guardacioni. That's a nice take right there by Guardacioni. That's a good slider out of the hand. It looks fastball, bottom drops out. He usually gets hitters to chase that. Fights one off and stays alive. Singer, like his teammate Jonathan India, semifinalist for the Golden Spikes Award for 2018. They'll announce the finalists during the upcoming week. 
A walk to Guardacioni, one out base runner for Jacksonville. Let's take a look at what Keith Law projects for Monday and upcoming week. Mock draft 3.0 from Keith Law. Mize first to the Tigers. Singer, you see there, fourth to the White Sox. And he's had Jonathan India to the Mets at number six in all three mock drafts. Last year, the first three picks were out of the high school ranks. Brendan McKay of Louisville was the first college player taken in 2017. And through the first ten picks, it was equal. Five high school draft picks, five from the college ranks. Connor Stevens at the plate with a runner aboard. Stevens last night was one for two with a double late in the game. Also walked and had a sacrifice. There were some articles written recently about the Mets who recently took a third baseman in the draft. Why would you take another? And I believe that that draft pick is now injured. And they said, well, that's the reason why we would do it again. And now they've got two years ago took a Florida Gator and Peter Alonzo, who's in double A and shining, and they want him up in New York. Stevens late. And India. According to a lot of scouts, he could move, and we've touched on it. India could be a shortstop, at least early on in his pro career. How enticing yeah. is it for India that he can play three different infield positions? Yeah, he's just very athletic. He's got the arm to play all three. Singer, his first walk, and now his first strikeout. Two away. He just goes right after hard cheese. It's got a little bit of run. That's late life at 90 plus. Ruben Samayan 0 for 1. For the second time against Singer. Singer at least seven innings in 10 of his 13 starts this year. To center field coming on. Horvath has to hold up. Plays it on a bounce. And Jacksonville with two on and two outs here in the third inning. Curious to see what Jacksonville does second time through the lineup against Singer. And Samaya, his second at bat of the ball game, picks up a clean single. This kid coming up here, Chris Lahane. Chris Hayes just glows when he talks about him. He says, this is a kid that worked his way into the lineup. First two years, they were just using him as a defensive guy in inner squad games. And somehow he found his way through injury into the lineup, made the most of it, and is having a great year. Six base hits and nine at bats during the two regular season meetings against Florida pitching. Bounce back to the box in his first at bat. Third team all conference in the A Sun. Came to Jackson just as a walk on, just looking for any old opportunity. He's made the most of it. Here he is in a regional. Singer a peak towards second. At the knees for strike two. See, that's what makes him effective, too. Late life at the knees. Georgia and Troy tonight in Athens. Troy on Friday blanking Duke to pick up a victory in their regional opener. Duke was bounced today. Blue Devils 0-2. Check swing. Look out. That one into the first base dugout at the near end. Count holds at a ball and two strikes. Lahane. He's laughing because he hit one of his teammates. They're all giving it to him from the dugout. Talking with John Bullock, home plate umpire. Duran send out the signs to Singer. Singer two strikeouts in the inning, and he leaves two runners on base. 
Three in the books in Gainesville, Florida and Jacksonville, still no score. Florida and Jacksonville, no score here in Gainesville. Florida head coach Kevin O'Sullivan joins us from the dugout on the third base side. Kevin, was there any trepidation going into the start tonight for Brady Singer, or was it all systems go? No, he threw a pen uh, on Saturday when we were in Hoover and threw again on Wednesday and felt 100%. And obviously, if he wasn't 100%, we certainly wouldn't be pitching uh, this weekend. Sully, uh, first couple innings, uh, Stockton's uh, look good. What's the approach coming in here uh, from this inning on? Well, you know, it's interesting. He threw against us uh, in, yep. you know, you know, during the year, and he threw a lot more sinkers in um, on our right-handers and away on lefties. And today seems like I, I can't really tell from my vantage point, but he's got a good changeup, and it looks like he's spinning yep. the ball and fastball counts. And, Certainly doesn't look like he's giving in. Kevin, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Now his vantage point is correct. That's the changeup has been really his pitch tonight. Then he'll mix in that fastball and get the hitters to chase it. India struck out in his first at bat. Was at the plate when Maldonado was cut down on a caught stealing to end the third inning. Singer missed time at the end of the season with a hamstring injury. Missed the final series against Mississippi State. Mississippi State swept that series. Only time the Gators were sent all season long. India waiting on the 2-1. Good pitch there, out in front on the off speed, and it's two and two. Well, Florida winning its regional opener yesterday against Columbia out of the Ivy League. Florida softball team in Oklahoma City for the College Softball World Series. That one tap foul. Losing on Friday to UCLA in action against Oklahoma. And that's an elimination game. India waiting on the 2-2. Stockton kicking at the dirt. They had the softball on during our delay before this game got underway. And this is why we've been telling you about ESPN Plus. Right there. $4.99 a month, folks. Down 2-0. And it could be their final turn at the plate. See you later. Number 18 for the SEC Player of the Year. why all the scouts are so high on Jonathan India the raw power watch him get the foot down and the barrel goes through the timing of it perfect Stockton you know not even glance at that but that pitch is up around letter high and he knew it when you throw him in there he'll hit it out you throw him away he'll hit it out the right center A drive by Dalton. India, Dalton, back to back. Watch this pitch right here. It's a slider and it hangs and Dalton does not miss. It's one of those where everybody in the ballpark knows it's out of there. Talk about your launch angles. It hit all over the trees. Let's see India's reaction. It's the next pitch. Hey, Will, I've got the team leading home runs again. Yeah, for a few moments there, Jonathan. Uh, no, you don't. Well, we're tied.
30 Eight. teen apiece. Yeah, 36 between them. I mean, this is a team that people were wondering, hey, they were scuffling in, in, in Hoover. What was going on? Well, they're back. And this is without J.J. Schwartz, when they get him back, that's why they're hoping that they win this regional and get J.J. back for the Super Regional. Austin Langworthy, a single in the second. <laughs> He's like, what pitch did you get? Well, Jonathan got a fastball. Will got a slider that hung. You think they're talking about home run distance upstairs? <laughs> Who hit it further? Well, that'll put a shock in you if you're on the mound. Stockton cruising through three scoreless. Touched up for the two home runs to open up the fourth inning. India and Dalton. Now he's just got to gather himself. Forget about it. Walks yeah. Langworthy. Well, you can see it started with the home run to India because the next pitch he hangs a slider. Now he walks the next hitter. So if you're Chris Hayes, you, you really got to start concentrating on what's going on here. You may want to think about the bullpen. I want this game to get away. This Gator team, they can escalate an inning in a hurry. They've done it a lot this year. Blake Reese lined to center in his first at bat. Stockton jumps in front, 0 and 1. 85 home runs on the season for Florida. Yeah, four for Reese and one against Stockton. Back in March. Florida losing to Oklahoma and Oklahoma City at the Women's College Softball World Series. 2 0 the final. Gator season comes to an end, losing to UCLA and Oklahoma. Runner goes. And Langworthy will head back to the bag at first. Stockton, 60 pitches, and he's found to record an out so far here in the fourth inning. The home runs by India and Dalton. Florida up 2 0. And looking to go up 2 0 here in the regional that they're hosting in Gainesville. Off the outside corner. Vanderbilt and Clemson all tied up at three. Vanderbilt, a shutout win against St. John's on Friday. We've got some great matchups on day two around the country. Mississippi State able to shake off the loss and winning the walk off fashion in Tallahassee against the Seminoles. DeBrule, the second, our shortstop takes care of it, and that's the first out. For more coverage of the Division I baseball regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Runner first, one away. They're loose in the third base dugout. There's Michael Byrne in the center there. More than likely we'll see him in this ball game. How about the confidence you have to have? Hey, we've got two and Singer on the mound. <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes that's more than enough when he's out there. Smith, a strikeout victim in his first at bat. Stockton has walked three and struck out four. Florida yesterday, a big six run inning. And it came against the Lions of Columbia as they put up six runs in the fourth inning. 
Eleventh time this year they've scored six or more in a frame. Langworthy five for seven on a year in stolen bases. Smith a pop-up. Armstrong on the grass. Two down. So Stockton after giving up the back to back home runs to India and Dalton walking Langworthy but now he's retired the next two hitters and Nick Horvath will come up he is 0 for 1 and that is impressive he gives up two long home runs crowds into it walks the next guy feeding frenzy in the stands and then gets the next two hitters to pop up pretty impressive that he settled down here senior showing poise. And you're right. India's home run got the crowd going and in a frenzy after the Dalton home run. Yeah, especially when you do it the next pitch. That just shocks your system. I guess if there's any good news for Chris Hayes, they were solo home. That's the Jacksonville coach. He will join us in the bottom of the fourth inning. Dallas Baptist putting up 18 runs. Oral Roberts eliminated. They scored nine in an 18 9 route. Into left field. Stevens was playing deep. And that one lands in front of him. Horvath aboard with a single. That puts runners at first and second. And you got to be careful here because Jonah Dryan is one of these guys that if you make a mistake, he can make this a 5 0 game in a hurry. I was talking to Brad Weitzel, the hitting coach. He said in the fall ball, he was hitting all kind of home runs. I think they counted nine. There's Brad, one of the reasons why the Gators have been so successful through the years under Kevin O'Sullivan. Outstanding hitting coach. Langworthy at second, Horvath, the runner at first. Duran yesterday against Columbia. A no doubter. And he's in the lineup because J.J. Schwartz's injury getting a chance has not played much at all this year. Two run shot came in the seventh inning turned into a lopsided victory for the Gators. And when I say he's not played much came into this game three for 12 on the season. This is game 61 for the Gators. Waiting on the breaking pitch, and it's two and one. You can just see his reaction right there. Hung him a slider, and he missed it. No real reaction. Sometimes hitters will kind of grimace or slap at the bat. I thought I saw a slump in the shoulders right there after he fouled it off. There's J.J. Schwartz, one of the best hitters ever to play at the University of Florida. Stockton trying to strand two here in the inning. And, and that's the difference, and this is why this team is ranked number one. College World Series winners a year ago, Gators came up this year with all this offense when you have two guys that I just said could be the greatest hitter in the history of the program arguably you got Jonathan India JJ Schwartz are on the same team there's Jonathan full count on Durand and JJ has broken a lot of records this is his fourth year India, this is his third year, but he was hurt some of last season. That's what a lot of people don't realize, why his numbers weren't anywhere near they are this year. We'll do it again at three balls and two strikes. Well, remember what I said when 
Stockton was here back in March, 88 pitches through five innings. 73 now through three and two thirds. Mentioned India dealt with a elbow injury last year in 2017. Florida gets to Omaha. That play he made at third against LSU is going to be one that we see an awful lot. Left center field. Samaya so gives way to Stevens. Florida, two runs here in the fourth inning. The Gators doing it with the long ball. First it was India. And then it was Dalton. Gators up 2-0. Chris Hayes joins us from the Jacksonville dugout when we come back. Florida 2, Jacksonville nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning. Dolphins head coach Chris Hayes joins us from the dugout now. Coach, do you like your approach right now against Brady Singer, or are you talking about making some adjustments second time through? Oh, absolutely. I think we're, we're in a good place right now from putting together some quality at bats. The guys are doing a good job of, of, of getting to getting to him a little bit. I mean, look, he's, he's one of the best in the country, if not the best in the country. It took a, it took a little bit for our guys to get acclimated to his arm slot and what he was doing, uh, but I like what we did last inning. Coach, let's talk about Stocked a little bit. Gave up uh, solo home runs. And coaches don't mind solo home runs. I like the way he harnessed himself in after he walked the, the hitter after that. T tell me what you think of him and how far he can go tonight. Uh, Spence is a great competitor. We, we've got great faith in him. He's done a great job thus far of, of just competing. He made two mistakes to two really good hitters. And, you know, we're just going to keep riding him. He's, he's going to continue to compete for us uh, and give us everything he's got. Chris, thank you very much. Thanks, fellas. Chris Hayes joining us from the Dolphins dugout. Stockton getting a rest. Singer back to work on the mound. DeBrule, Camacho, Armstrong, 3-4-5, due up for Jacksonville. We talked with Chris Hayes last night in the Jacksonville fourth inning. His team went out there and put up a three spot. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's right. They did. <laughs> Opposite way and foul. This one slicing towards the concourse and landed just shy. Yeah, they had the two-run homer and then the solo blast in the fourth. Put the glove back on. Hey, I always say that's a definition of an optimist. You come to a ballpark with a glove. What are the odds? Count stays two strikes on DeBrule. Scott DeBrule, 84 hits on the season. Some of the fans have made their way to the concourse and heading for cover. It is raining here in Gainesville. I'm starting to understand the weather patterns around here. <laughs> Are you? Okay. If it's not raining right now, it might be in 15 minutes. And if yeah. it's raining 20 minutes away from here, it might be raining again in a short amount of time. Starting to pick up just a bit. That one fouled back. That's the Florida rule. Just wait a few minutes. It'll change. If you don't like the weather, mm -hmm. be patient. Tied him up. They will appeal. No swing, says Craig Barrow. And the majority of the players in this game are born and raised in this state, so it's not going to bother them. They've been through this before. Horvath shaded over in the alley, positioned perfectly. Now Singer early on retired the first four batters on ground ball outs, gave up the hit to Armstrong, then got a double play ground ball. A couple of balls now have been put in the air. Is he elevating a little bit? Is the approach different for Jacksonville? What do you see? Well, I mean, they're, they're seeing him for a second time around. They, they may have an inkling of what they're going to try to do to him, but he, he still looks sharp to me. Camacho up the middle. Lip it to his left. There's a ground ball out. Two away. What, you see, the bottom fell out of that two-seamer, and he just swung over the top of it, hit it hard, but right at the shortstop Lip it, who's one of the better shortstops in all the Southeastern Conference. Lip it, just three errors on the season. That's phenomenal, by the way. Absolutely. Had one. A line drive went off his glove against Columbia when as an E6 on Friday. 
Armstrong one for one with a base hit in his first at bat. Then he was erased on a double play. Has three hits in the regional so far. First pitch swinging. Langworthy. One, two, three. Go the Dolphins against Singer in the fourth. On to the fifth we go in Gainesville. Fart up 2-0 on the Dolphins. Fart of Jacksonville in our Gainesville Regional. The winner of this game will be in the Catbird seat. 2-0. And they'll play either Fart Atlantic. If Florida wins this, it will be Fart Atlantic and Jacksonville Sunday in game one at 1 Eastern. A year ago in Omaha, Florida, LSU, Oregon State, Cal State, Fullerton, TCU, Florida State, Louisville, and Texas A&M. Aggies, Tigers, and Gators all out of that SEC, and it was a all-SEC championship with Florida winning its first title in school history, beating LSU two games to none in the best of three championship series. Lippitt puts a charge into one. So Mayan drifts back. Amidst the raindrops, makes the catch. Now, these are the guys that you have to pay attention to in a ballpark. They have taken their position. That's the grounds crew, folks. And if they're called upon to put the tarp on the field, right now we're told they're going to continue to play as long as the field is deemed playable. Delayed at the start by an hour. And there was no rain and no lightning during the 7 o'clock Eastern hour, but they thought it was on its way. And the system sort of broke up on its approach to Gainesville at McKeithen Stadium. Maldonado has walked twice, cut down on a caught stealing to end the third. And by what you just described, it seems like there's nothing more serious weather-wise heading this way. It's just this nagging steady rain. This field does a nice job of holding water. Two and one on Maldonado. Before they put the tarp on the field, just before six o'clock, they did the normal pregame routine and they did hose down the infield before putting the tarp on. Maldonado and another hitter's count. Pop up around the plate. Guardacione going back. Makes the catch, sliding feet first on the warning track. That was a nifty play by Guardacione. He's not only negotiating the backspin of the ball, he's looking up in the raindrops. You don't think that's difficult? He's got the wall, the raindrops, the ball's backspin. His helmet flying off. Man, that's concentration right there. Great play. A little snap of the glove after popping back up. Two down. Yeah, and he gets, and also by making that catch, he gets a guy that gets on base a lot with Jonathan India coming up next. Yeah, five pitches enough for Maldonado in that at bat, according to Guardacione. As he pops up on a 3-1 offering. India, home run in the fourth, his 17th on the season. That got the Gators on the board with a 1-0 lead. After he crossed home plate, went to the third base dugout. Will Dalton right behind him with a solo shot. Well, it's been very impressive for me for Stockton. Back-to-back -back home runs, got the crowd in. It was the walk after that concerned me. I thought, you know what, it's in his head. This could escalate quickly. It did not. Very impressive. Line shot right to third. Armstrong puts it in his glove, inning over. India stung it. Stockton works a one, two, three, fifth. We've gone halfway. Fart in front, two nothing. Stockton and Singer, the pitching matchup tonight at McKeithen Stadium. Singer first starts. It's May 11th, mowing him down early on. Then India and Dalton. Going back to back in the fourth inning. They both got 17 on the season. Go get the water balloons. You're watching the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. 
not the bubbles, it's the water balloons. I, I love, love it. I love Sully laughing in the background of the water balloon uh, toss. That was outstanding. John Casala hit into a double play in his first at bat. Yeah, teams that have fun go a long way, I tell you. The skater team, very confident bunch. One of the best parts of June, the reactions that are just natural. Singer has allowed two hits. He's walked one and struck out two. Ten wins, one loss on the year. Casella, a leadoff base runner. As he flips the baseball to Singer, and Singer says, you know what, I'll ask for a new one. That was on an 0-2. Working in the fifth with a 2-0 lead. No signs of rust. Stake to a 2-0 lead. With the home runs from India and Dalton in the fourth inning. Garistazu 0 for 1. Breaking ball and a beauty. And you got to pitch this guy careful. Home run power. We saw it last night. He'll take it inside pitch and turn on it. The rain looks like it has let up. Tried to pick up a strike on the outer half. And the count even at a ball and a strike on Corey Garistazu. Jacksonville, 40 wins on the season with their victory last night against Florida Atlantic. Two and one the count. Singer, one of his best starts early May on the road at Texas A&M. Nine innings, no runs. Walked no one and struck out five. Three outings on the year with no walks. Now, remember what I said earlier in this ball game about J.U. needing to get base runners on early in innings. Get Singer off his rhythm. Well, they were able to do that here, and now he's turned this into a 3-1 count. Just the first time in the game through the first five that they've had the leadoff man reach. Armstrong had a one out hit in the second. Florida turned two. Three and two the count. A one out walk to Guardacioni in the third inning. And he was left eventually at second as Jacksonville left two runners on base. Payoff pitch coming to Garistazu. And he stays alive. We talked prior to the game. Duran behind the plate catching Singer for the first time during the season. Have you liked yeah. how he's received yeah, both I, pit, all the pitchers so far? I do. I think he's done a really nice job. He's sort of the middleman, taking the signs from the dugout, sending them out to the pitcher. Strikeout number three for Singer. What a great comeback. Fell behind in the count, worked it full, and then that's not fair. Change up. And like we saw earlier, the release point, that's yeah. a big key to the change up coming out of the hand. Absolutely. You don't think you're going to get a 3-2 changeup. Who throws a 3-2 <laughs> changeup? It's not fair. Guardacioni walked in his first plate appearance, was left stranded. And down in the count, no balls and a strike. So a lot of times you'll see hitters at different levels. They'll go back to the dugout, and guys might want some intel. When you strike out on a 3-2 changeup, <laughs> do you just stay away from that guy? Now they, they saw what happened. Pass 
across the diving Indian down the left field line. Langworthy over to cut it off. Casala digging for third. He'll go in. Landing gear down. And the Dolphins have something stirring against Singer here in the fifth inning with two in scoring position and just one out. Have yourself an inning, Mr. Guardacioni. Ball had sink in action, but got the barrel out. Got over the top of it and got it down the line. Reaction from India. Guardacioni with that great defensive play, the top of the inning. Now follows it up with a double, and that's key because now you could say the potential lead run at the plate, potential tie run at second. Connor Stevens, a strikeout victim in his first at bat. Stevens now one for three in the Gainesville Regional. Two in scoring position. Guardacioni at second, the tying run. First pitch strike, 0 and 1, the count. Stevens a left handed hitter, but he likes working the ball away. He'll take a ball out or third and slap it that way. Right, left, right, left throughout the lineup, one through nine for Chris Hayes. Only back to back lefty batter, Stevens here, and Samayan, who's on deck. Similar in the same last night, although a couple of hitters switching spots in the lineup. Stevens, a guy that been fighting leg injuries all year. He's shown moments of brilliance at the plate, according to Chris Hayes. Time called for. And Kevin O'Sullivan will pay a visit to the mound. Singer at 65 pitches, working with a 2-0 lead here in the fifth inning, but right now finds himself in a jam. Maybe Sully saw something there in the delivery they're going to correct here. Third year in the program, Sully has seen him pitch a lot of baseball. Can easily pick up anything that needs adjustments or just give him a breather here. Pitch count wise, this has been his longest inning. You're, you, you, you're, you're giving up a run here. You got a two run lead. Infield back. You've talked about it where. Pitchers will be out on the mound. They'll cover up with the glove yeah. so nobody can read their lips. Yeah. Yeah. That conversation to me almost was in a whisper, even though we didn't know. We know the tone of it, but uh, just very casual in conversation. Stevens back in. Red beard and all. Yeah, that's the best beard of the regional. Singer from the stretch. Line drive, base hit, left center field. Stevens comes through. They stop the runner at third as Casala scores. And Chris Hayes putting the stop, uh, stop sign up. RBI base hit by Stevens and Jacksonville on the board. Yeah, that's what he does. He'll work the pitch away. He'll hit it that way. And he's real good at it. That pitch was off-speed pitch. It was breaking away. Looked like a little changeup stayed up, but he stayed on it. And he didn't try to pull it. He tries to pull that pitch. It's a ground out. Jacksonville for the second straight game, getting production from the bottom third of the lineup. Garastazu, Casala, and Stevens in last night's victory against Florida Atlantic combining for five hits. Casala hit by a pitch to open up the inning. He scores. Samayan so one for two, a single in his last at bat. Now it's a third time through the lineup against Singer. Still just one out, tying run at third. Stevens at first represents the go-ahead run. Bunt out front of the plate. Singer comes in, tags out the runner, Guardacioni, and that's out number two. And by the way, he can field his position. This is a play you rarely ever see. A pitcher on a safety squeeze picking it up and tagging out the runner before he gets to the plate. That's impressive. That's athleticism right here. I don't think you would have had time to shovel with the underhand flip to Durand at the plate. No, that's the only play he had. 
But it was all in front of him, and he's like, I, I got this. What a great play. So Mayan reaches on a fielder's choice, not credited with a sacrifice as they get the out on the at the plate. Stevens moves into scoring position. He's at second with two away. The Gators win this game by one run. You go right to that play. Lahane 0 for 2. Retired on a comebacker, and he's also struck out. Second base, Blake Reese. Side retired. Dolphins with their first run. Singer escapes any further damage, stranding two. Stevens coming through, getting the Dolphins on the board. It's 2-1 Florida as we go to the sixth inning in Gainesville. Florida on top, 2-1. Winner of this one advances to the winner's bracket at 2-0 for game six on Sunday. Let's take a look at Brady Singer fielding his position. Watch it right here. A little hesitation by Guardacioni as that ball was put down. That made the difference and made Singer able to go over there and make this tag himself. And it's one of those things where you rarely sac sacrifice or safety squeeze with a left-handed hitter up. You definitely don't. Suicide squeeze. That facial expression has not changed at any point in this game. Maybe when India and Dalton went back to back. Here is Dalton to right field. And he is retired for the first out. The ESPN networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha. It starts this weekend with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage on the way to Omaha, available on the ESPN app. Austin Langworthy aboard twice and twice left at second base. Singled in the second, walked in the fourth. Spencer Stockton has retired five in a row. And seven of his last eight hitters. Langworthy shows bunt. Langworthy took the loss during the regular season here at home against Jacksonville, working out of the bullpen. Two-way player. So Langworthy show bunt. That's something we haven't seen. We're in game four of this regional. The, the bunts we've seen are to advance runners. We haven't seen anybody lay one down to beat it out. And on the hands... And Langworthy with a count now one and two. A left-handed batter. As we see Langworthy at the plate. You can bunt between first base bag and the pitcher's mound and almost try to get the second baseman to field it. And right now, Lahane not expecting anything of the sort. He's a step or two under the outfield grass from his second base position. Yeah, two strikes. That bunts off. Langworthy puts a charge into one. Going back on it at the wall, jumping, and the catch is made by Garastazu. Langworthy robbed of a home run, that one deserving of a standing ovation. And remember this, this is not his home park. And he negotiates this wall as about as good as someone that's been playing here his entire life. Reaction from the bullpen guys. He timed that perfectly. And it stayed in his glove once his glove hit the top of the fence. You and Corey are going to have something to talk about in the hotel lobby again tomorrow. Here is Reese. Yeah, Garastas has been pretty impressive. Home run against FAU last night, robbing Langworthy of a home run tonight. And here I was talking about a bunt. 
But as you said, not with two strikes and almost a two strike home run yeah. by Langworthy. Swing and a miss by Reese. Auburn in the seventh inning up 10 1 on Army West Point. Casey Mize, six innings of one run baseball. He has struck out eight against the Golden Knights. The beat goes on for Casey Mize. Which team will grab him on Monday? Detroit Tigers last year took Alex Fiedo in the first round. And Alex now in his first full season of professional baseball in 2018. Recently got his first pro win. Easy to say that Mize and Singer would both be on the fast track to the big leagues. 2-1 delivery. Outside ball three. Which pitcher would you take in terms of getting there to the big wow. leagues yeah. in the next couple of years? Well, that's... Let me ponder that one. I think you can't go wrong with either. Three and two on Reese. Armstrong watches this one land back in the seats. Some fans still taking cover. Rain a short time ago. No stoppage in play. Folks come prepared. Bouncing ball, second base, Lahane on the slick infield dirt. Throws out Reese. Florida up 2 0. Could have been 3 0, but Stockton getting a little help from his friend. Garastaza says, okay, I'm going to keep this in the ballpark any way I can. He does his bullpen, goes crazy. He knows this is a run saver and keeps them within one run of this ball game. They're fired up, coming to hit in the sixth inning. That's all for you, my friend. Florida two, Jacksonville one. Brady Singer back out for the six. Let's take a look at Singer. First four innings, 14 batters face, two hits, no runs. Ran into trouble in the fifth inning, limited the damage, giving up the two hits and helped his own cause, getting the runner at the plate on a bunt attempt and uh, working with a one run lead. What's the difference? Remember what I said? Leadoff guy got on. Leadoff hitter here in the sixth inning. Scott DeBrule, and it was Singer helping his own cause with a play at the plate. Guardacioni out, one unassisted out the plate. Samayan laid down the bunt. Guardacioni coming down the line from third, and Singer picked up the ball right in front of the plate and tagged out the runner before he got to the dish. DeBrule 0 for 2, line to center, and his last at bat. Three, four, five, due up for the Dolphins. I mean, you see the difference when the leadoff guy doesn't get on. He'll just run right through you. He'll set the tempo. He waits for the hitter to get himself ready, and as soon as he's in the box, he's ready to go. Strikeout number four for Brady Singer. One down here in the sixth inning. You better be ready when you step in that box because he's coming. I mean, that's right down the middle. The hitter obviously not ready. That ball's got a little late life on it. Catches probably the outer third. Or started off splitting the plate. Had a little sinking action to it. But you better be ready to go with him. The Singer K corner. Angel Camacho, seven-game hit streak, 0 for 2 so far. Takes ball one low. Now watch Camacho. He's going to stay out there for as long as he can. But once he gets himself set and ready to go, here comes the pitch. There it is. One and one. And hitters hate that. They want to take a few practice swings, get themselves ready, time you up. He Surprise. gives you no opportunity to do that. Surprise they haven't asked for time every once in a while to try to upset that timing? Well, I mean, 
the way they got the rules set up, they're, they're really frowning against a lot of that as long as he's not quick pitching you. If you're in, you're in the batter's box, you're a fair game to start the pitch, but you better be ready to go after him. Professional hitters will ask for time, and it will probably be granted down the road for Brady Singer, I would think. That one gets through the catcher. Turan and goes to the backstop. Well, really what happens is Singer waits till you're in there. See, it's not time between pitches. He waits until you get in the box. Once you're in the box, he goes. So, you know, major league hitter, he's going to do the same thing too. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here in the sixth inning for Singer. His fifth strikeout of the game. Introducing ESPN Plus, your home for more sports, more schools, more conferences, more ESPN. Stream ESPN Plus exclusively on the ESPN app for just $4.99 a month. Sign up now for ESPN Plus. How do I do this? This works. This is technology at its best. There we go. Hello, sir. <laughs> Can I get Steve Lennox on tonight? I know I'm at the game. But I want to hear Steve describe it. Armstrong, one out of two. Armstrong, back to number 12 tonight. Last night in the home whites, he wore number 44. Apparently, we were told before the game, 44 is a little small in the white uniform for Sam Armstrong. Number 12 in green. Fits comfortably. Last night, 44, he homered. We started thinking about Hammer and Hank and yeah. Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. So 44 is of legendary status. I'll give you a few more. Willie McCovey, Frank Howard. Big Frank Howard. Longtime Washington senator. Hondo. Gentle giant. At six 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 seven. Called strike three, inning over. Singer strikes out the side. All three strikeouts looking. DeBrule, Camacho, Armstrong, 2-1, Florida. Spencer Stockton giving up two home runs in the fourth inning. Stockton and Singer as advertised. Stockton has matched potential number one overall pick. When the Major League Baseball draft gets underway on Monday, Singer now sitting in the dugout. How about Singer in the top or bottom half of the sixth inning? Yeah, I mean, he, he just dominates. You don't get on base to slow him down to start an inning. That's what he does. He'll run right through you. Randy Smith 0 for 2. He has struck out and popped out to the third baseman against Spencer Stockton. This kid's got power. Only two home runs, but he can knock one out of here. Sometimes you talk about a freshman and you'll say, okay, they'll fill out over the next couple of years, add a couple of pounds, get a little thicker across the chest. He came in strong, yes. is what you're saying. Yeah, I got you. Comes up empty. Yeah, his thing tonight is he's pulling his head and shoulder. Going to keep that front shoulder in. And throw your hands at the ball. Does that go hand in hand with not getting a lot of at bats in game action? Well, he's, he's played a decent amount. Just off the corner. Because they started using him at first base against lefties and Keenan Bell, who we saw in yesterday's game, against righties. Yeah. You look at... The statue. He has started 35 games this season, been in 46. But 
but when you fly open, you just want to make too many things happen. Payoff pitch. Left center field. Samayan going back has a beat on it. And Smith retired for the third time tonight. That ball was hit pretty deep, deep part of the ballpark, and he just missed it. Just missed it. He stayed on that pitch. Stockton has retired eight in a row and 10 of 11. The two home runs and a walk since then. Horvath a base hit, and that's been it. And Horvath stands in with the bases empty and one down. Breaking ball strike. Now six in the third innings, 102 pitches. Conversely, his last time through here, five innings, 88 pitches. One ball, one strike count on Nick Horvath. Jonah Duran, number nine hitter in the Florida lineup on deck. I mean, Stockton has been very impressive. Two quick home runs back in the fourth. A walk, and then he settled down. Senior making his 13th start tonight and 17th appearance overall. In our conversation we had with Chris Hayes, you could just tell the confidence he had in Stockton. And remember, they've got a really good reliever. And Chris Maloney, who did not pitch yesterday, can go multiple innings. There's that change. Throwing it to the right-handed batter and throwing it effectively. Established that early on. Yeah, he did. And even Kevin O'Sullivan mentioned that we talked to him in the fourth inning that the change is something that they got to make the adjustment to. Vanderbilt and Clemson in a one-run ball game. Commodores with a 4-3 lead. Ball in the dirt. Guardacioni tags out Horvath. Strikeout number five for Stockton, his first since the third inning. He's now retired nine in a row. And that's a slider right there. He buries. Good stuff from Stockton tonight. Base is empty. Jonah Duran 0 for 2. Fly to left in his last at bat. Swings and drives one to left field. This one is out of here. Touch them all. Jonah Duran, his second home run of the regional. And only his third start of the season. Slider, he's on it. And we've talked about the power he possesses. Brad Weitzel said he hit nine home runs in the fall. They knew he had power. And that is huge because now you got a two run lead and it's time to toss the balloon. I don't know which is more important. Duran. I, I, I guess I'll say the two-run lead. Ear-to-ear -ear smile. I think he got it on the second try. <laughs> They're loving it. <laughs> Equipment manager Edmund Boyd laughing in the background. Three solo home runs. 3-1 Florida. Lip it. Takes low. Stockton now up above 100 pitches for the game, now 110. And Lippitt swings through it. Remember we talked about the other day, uh, 
the fact that the Gator catchers offense was going to be gravy. Right. Handle the pitching staff with J.J. Schwartz out. Just handle the pitching staff. Let the other guys do it. But here's Duran becoming an X factor in this region. Eighty-six home runs on the season for the Gators. Well, that that second run that, that gives you that two-run lead because you get a team like Jacksonville, they they will drop a bunt down on you to sack you in a one-run ball game. You take that away from them right now with that two-run lead, at least in the seventh. Dalton, two home runs. Duran. Or Dalton, pardon me. Yeah, Dalton with two. Duran with two. And you could say Stockton, three bad pitches. Letter high fastball to India. Hanging sliders to Duran and Dalton. Stockton picks up his second strikeout, strikeout of the inning. And the side retired. Duran with the home run. His second of the regional. Five in two games for the Gators. They're up 3-1 as it's time to stretch at McKeithen Stadium. You're watching the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Brady Singer takes a mound here in the seventh. He has thrown 84 pitches, allowing one earned run. Struck out the side in the last inning. John Casala, 0 for 1, hit by a pitch, scored the Dolphins' run in the fifth inning, led off, and ended up scoring on a base hit by Connor Stevens. 6 7 8, due up against Singer here in the seventh inning. Keenan Bell is now at first base for Florida. Defensive substitution as he is now in the lineup. And batting seventh, replacing Brady Smith. Off the end of the bat foul. Singer, first two innings, gave up just one, uh, just uh, the one base runner, and Armstrong was promptly erased on a double play. Threw 20 pitches through the first two, had 21 pitches in the third inning, but was able to leave two stranded. India, a bobble, regroups, one down. Gators trying to move forward here in Gainesville, a victory, and they'll be in the regional final. And they can pick up a victory here and then win out and go 3-0 if they can pick up a win against either Florida Atlantic or Jacksonville in our nightcap on Sunday. Columbia eliminated earlier today falling to Florida Atlantic 11-2. This game is no means over, but if the Gators do hold on, Jackson's going to play FAU. The winner's going to have to go against Mr. Coar. Yeah, it really does not get any easier tomorrow, <laughs> does it? Yeah, Jackson Coar is one of the better pitchers in all of college baseball. He's going to go high in the draft on Monday. You can come into a series against Florida and face Singer and Coar and walk away finding yourself in a slump. There he is. He'll be ready to go tomorrow, depending on who he plays. Of course, like I said, baseball's funny. This game far from over. Coar from Charlotte, North Carolina. 24 career victories in a Gators uniform. Garastazu 0 for 2 and a full count. A couple times now in 3 1 counts, Garastazu has taken strike two. Sports Center top 10, perhaps for Garastazu. Lines this one to right field, and this one will leave the yard. Dalton watches it sell towards the scoreboard, and Garastazu with a second home run in the Gainesville Regional. And we are back to a one run ball game. That kid is having himself one heck of a regional. Stole a home run earlier in this ball game. Hits a solo job here. Last night we said he had a three wood over the scoreboard. This was more like a three iron. 
a screaming liner on 3 2. Guardacioni, as Singer knew it, found its way over to plate and he's, he's on it. Franco, Guardacioni at the plate. That one got the home plate umpire, John Bullock. And Durand is going to walk away from the home plate area. And Bullock, John Bullock will have an opportunity. He says he's all right. He's ready to go. Another look at the home run for Corey Garastazu. You can see it's just one of these top spin home runs. It just clears the fence, but he just barrels it up. And he's an intense young man. Jacksonville's, they're, that's big life in their dugout right now because now we talked about it. this is a team right. that if you could have been a one run game late, they have the ability. They like to play a little small ball. They will drop a butt. They'll sack it. Involved in 13 one run games so far this year. Seven wins, six losses. We talked about their ability to sacrifice punt. They do that more than any team in this regional. 48 on the season. Conversely, the Gators with nine. A one out base runner. Guardacioni trots down to first base representing the tying run. Now is this where you can say Singer has not pinched since early yeah. May? Yeah, you're getting that. You're right under that 100 pitch count. So Sully's going to watch him real close here. Now he does know he's he's got Michael Byrne, who's well rested, who can go two and a third innings. He can go three innings. Very efficient when he's out there. Usually he gets through innings with 10, 12 pitches. And he looks ready to go if needed. Stevens at the plate. Lippet to second. Reese to first. Double play, and the inning is over. Lippet, Reese, Bell, 6 4 3. Jacksonville again pulling to within a run. Garastazu, second home run of the regional. 3 2. And a one run ball game here in Gainesville. Corey Garastazu has robbed a home run from Mr. Austin Langworthy and his home run in the bottom of the seventh against Cor uh, Brady Singer, making it a one-run ball game. Florida has also used a long ball. Scoreless in the fourth inning. Jonathan India and then Will Dalton. They go back to back. India number 17, Dalton number 17. And in the seventh, Jonah Duran, his second home run of the regional. Jonathan India, due up after Nelson Maldonado, Dalton in the dugout. They call him Dalton. New pitcher in for Jacksonville. And it's lefty Matt Meyer who is now on. He had a kid from Palm Bay, 88 to 90 on the fastball slider change, and also features a cutter. And that's the thing that's made him a difference from last year. He's added that into his repertoire. The number's obviously not where he wants, and it's because of those walks. But you can see 31 Ks in only 25 and two third innings. So he will get the strikeout susceptible, though, on the command. So that's something that's going to be crucial here. Chris Hayes, I'm sure, is watching him closely in a one-run ball game. 18 for India, 18 for Dalton. Don't want to shortchange either one. Meyer made his first career start in the Atlantic Sun Championship game against North Florida. Went a career-high five innings, gave up two earned runs, and struck out four. Began his collegiate career at Campbell. First base side, Camacho giving a look. Somebody. 
I think I said earlier Duke lost to Campbell, and I apologize. That game's now in the bottom half of the ninth inning. I thought I saw Duke on the wrong end. But uh, the Duke Blue Devils, 11 runs in the top of the ninth inning. And now leading 16-8 in the bottom half of the night. Duke was shut out by Troy on Friday. Blue Devils 16 runs, 19 hits. The two seed against the four seed Campbell tonight. They were on the ropes. North Carolina State elimination game earlier today. They knocked out Northeastern in Raleigh. Mississippi State earlier knocking out Florida State. Maldonado 0 for 1. Has walked twice in this game. Last at bat was turned away. Florida Sione, the catcher, making a pop, uh, catching a pop up behind home plate. 2 3 4 do up for Florida. Again, Gators trying for insurance runs here late. Working with the lead, they've not trailed. DeBrule and Armstrong. Armstrong makes the call, makes the catch. So Meyer out of the bullpen, retires the first batter that he faces. Stockton gave up three solo home runs and making the start tonight for the Dolphins. I don't think you could have asked any more of Mr. Stockton. No, he did a great job. If, if you would have said, okay, we'll go into the eighth inning, you're down one run the University of Florida in a winner bracket game in a regional. Chris Hayes go, okay, we're good. We'll take that. And, and tell him you're going to be facing Brady Singer to boot. India, the count in his favor. Two balls and no strikes. Homered in the fourth, line to third to end the fifth inning. Yeah, Gators with 86 home runs, as you mentioned. Last year, College World Series winners, they only had 53. The Brule gathers it in a second time. India retired, two away. Yeah, the ball was hit so hard that Brule actually had time once it kicked out of his glove to make the play. But he didn't panic. This ball is scorched. India's been on a lot of these. It's one of those plays that maybe you don't need the backhand. Looks like he might have had enough time to get in front of. But when the ball's hit that hard, you don't you don't think at that point that you can round it off. Will Dalton, one out of three with a home run, is 18th on the season. The second of back-to-back -back home runs in the fourth inning against Stockton. Confident hitter right here. Dangerous. If you're Meyer here, you got to keep everything down. Five hits, seven runs batted in. In the first game plus here in the Gainesville Regional. To right field, Garastazu takes care of it. Side retired. Meyer. Works a 1 2 3 eighth inning. We've got a one run ball game going to the home eighth. Brady Singer making his first start since early May against Georgia. Terrific tonight in the start against Jacksonville. This is the last look the scouts are going to see before draft day. And Brady Singer could care less. He's trying to get to the College World Series. And he was just down to carving up Jacksonville. What an outstanding line right there. Brady Singer, seven innings, five hits. Two earned runs, a walk, and six strikeouts. Gives way to Michael Byrne. It's a combination that's worked in the past. Kevin O'Sullivan hoping it works tonight. And Michael Byrne, one of the greatest relievers in college baseball, and the best ever at the University of Florida. Already has the career, already set the career record here in single season. Goes to work. How about the walk numbers right there? And that's what he does. First pitch strikes. That is something he does probably 85 to 90 percent of the hitters he faces. Thursday name 2018 Baseball America first team All American. 
Just a guy that's tough to square up. He doesn't overpower you, but everything's moving. Fair ball inside the bag and down the right field line. This is going for extra bases for Ruben Samayan. Dalton plays it back in. Samayan looking for a triple, and he'll go in, landing gear down. Leadoff triple, and the Jacksonville Dolphins have something going here in the eighth inning. So Mayan right here, he's looking inside, he gets it, and that pitch was up. He rides it right down the line with his speed. He's thinking three right out of the box. Rudder high pitch. Able to see it get past the diving Keenan Bell at first base. That's good base running technique. He picked up his third base coach halfway between first and second. That's the way you do it. Nobody out, tying run at third. Lahane 0 for 3. Six hits now and 12 at bats against Florida pitching this season. Gators bring their infield in on the corners, back up the middle. Breaking ball to right field. Dalton is there, makes a catch. Samaya tagging, holds up. Throw comes all the way through to the plate. And a big first out from Michael Byrne. He started, he stopped, he started, then he stopped. And I thought he was going to go ahead and try it. He's got good speed. Boy, he took like four steps down. Reaction from Lahane. Well, he's looking for an RBI, but as it turned out where that throw was, it would have been bang, bang at the plate with nobody out. That'd be a tough one to swallow. Chris Hayes in the ear of Samayan. Dalton, strong throw to the plate. Kevin O'Sullivan is going to pay a visit to the mound here. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, his pitcher right here, uncharacteristically, has given up two line drives. One was caught and one was hit for a triple. Another look on the throw from Dalton. He got rid of it quick, and it's right on line. That would have been a bang-bang play. It was a medium deep, maybe one of those tweeners where you can decide to. Now, with one out, you, cha you challenge. With nobody out, so that's the time you're going to go ahead and go, well. I mean, where that throw ended up, chances are he was going to get thrown out anyway. That, now, that with right on out, now with one out in the inning. Kevin O'Sullivan will bring all four infielders up. Lippitt and Reese, short and second, not quite on the infield grass. Scott DeBrule at the plate, 0 for 3. And this is a guy who comes in, no home runs, but those 52 RBIs has a knack for getting runs home. Four sacks on the year if you're thinking safety squeeze here. Pop up. Left field line, Langworthy, long run, in foul territory, lip it, dropped it. And that may have saved the run. Because if he catches it, that run scores easily. We'll see how this inning unfolds, but that could end up being a break. Lip it had a long run. Kevin O'Sullivan glaring down the left field line. But this is our first look. Yeah, lip it. Lippitt looks like and th you're going to call this a no catch every time if you're an umpire because they're looking for the infielder to come up or an outfielder to, sh to show the ball. So that was a correct call. DeBrule was second life. Two ball, one strike count. But think about that. If he makes that catch, we got a tie game right now. Right. And it was in the glove initially, but it wasn't in there long enough. Off the end of the bat foul, two ball, two strike count. Burn could use a strikeout right here. Yeah, and this is sometimes this is where he'll throw you some kind of a changeup pitch that'll get you out in front and strike you out. Something soft.
towards first. Bell. Reese got to the back, two away. I'm actually surprised he did not go on contact there, to be honest with you. Force a play at the plate with one out. Now, it can end up in their favor. But that's one of those slow choppers that you know, most times with one out, you're going to go ahead and give it a shot. Bell he knew that Reese was going to be behind him. And even if you have the infield in, those, those ones that take that little Baltimore shot that start, those are the ones you look for to take off on. And remember, Samayan, he's got good speed down there. Now, pressure on Duran to block anything in the dirt here. Camacho 0 for 6, or 1 for 3. 0 for 3, pardon me, 1 for 6 so far in the regional. Seven-game hit streak. Cleanup hitter. A line to right for the first out after the leadoff triple by Samayan. And a bouncer to first. The Brule out 3-4. That was a great pitch and a great take. There's mom, Rita Byrne. She's gone through this now for three years. Had the national champion patch on her right shoulder. Pop up around the plate. Duran in and over. Michael Byrne, the magician. Time went a third, nobody out. He gets the next three batters. A proud mama. And the Gators go to the ninth with a one-run lead. Duran flips the ball away. Jacksonville leaves a tying run at third. Michael Byrne. Sitting by himself in the Florida dugout. Gave up the leadoff triple to Ruben Samayan. Got the next three batters, and Samayan left at third, and a lot of that to his doing. I mean, Michael Byrne does this all the time, and that leadoff triple being stranded, that was obviously huge. A couple opportunities to go, and Samayan stayed at third base. Langworthy at the plate. Gators up a run, 3-2. Langworthy aboard twice, a single and a walk. Robbed of a home run in the sixth inning by Garastazu and right. Two ball, no strike count. Well, Singer had a sixth inning where he struck out the side and got the three, four, five hitters. And I thought that was an inning where some of the wind was taken out of the sails for the Dolphins. A leadoff triple, tying run at third, and they failed to score in the eighth inning. But this is a group, Chris Hayes said during the workout day on Thursday in conversation, this is a team that they pick each other up. So that inning is now behind them. Now it's up to Meyer to keep this a one-run ball game. He worked a 1-2-3 eighth, getting Maldonado, Indian Dalton. And we talked about this singer in those seven innings only surrendered a leadoff man on base one time, and that was when the Dolphins were able to score in that uh, fifth inning. Then, of course, Garastazzo hit the solo. Three and two. Thought line worthy. Might be up there taking one more. Now he's run the count full. Reese and Bell scheduled to follow Austin Langworthy. One out. First strikeout for Matt Meyer. Well, Meyer's done a nice job since coming in. Got him way out in front of that slider. He saw a fastball out of the hand, couldn't hold it up. And that's a nice comeback by Meyer to get that first out. Was behind in the count, 3-0. and Riso for three. Hit her second baseman. Grounded out against Stockton. 
to end the sixth inning. Yeah, first time hitting from the right side. Sharply hit, but foul outside of third. The way this game's unfolding, Chris Maloney, the Jacksonville closer, still not used. And there he is in the pen just in case this thing escalates. One ball, two strike count on Blake Reese. The kid out in the pen, Maloney, he's came into this regional tied for most saves in the country with 20. Check swing, ball in the dirt. Reese went around, according to John Bullock, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Meyer here in the ninth inning. The ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, the SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage also available through ESPN3 and the bases loaded channel. All coverage available on the ESPN app. Keenan Bellis first at bat, one for five with a double against Columbia on Friday. Bell came in as a defensive replacement and looks at strike one. And he's another guy, don't make a mistake down and into him. He'll ride one out of the yard. Those have power opposite way as well. Meyer looking to work. His second one, two, three inning. Again, trying to work outside on the corner and missing. Two and two on Bell. Pulled off that a, a little bit. That pitch was up. Not where Meyer wanted it. Let's see if he throws that same pitch he threw to Langworthy on 3 2. Slider at the knees, breaking down and away. See if he can get him to chase it. I think that would be a good option here. Winner of this ball game advancing to the winner's bracket on Sunday and day three here in Gainesville. Check swing and foul. That was the pitch. You got him in swing mode. Maybe you come back again. Started off a little bit further away. Let it break out of the zone, see if he chases it then. Guardacioni sets up outside. Bell to center field. Samayan makes a grab, ending over. Meyer does his job, keeps it a one run ball game. Sam Armstrong will lead things off in the home ninth inning for the Dolphins. They're down a run. Also, Garastazu will be due up third. He's homered in the game. Gainesville Regional, winner of this game, will move on and be 2-0 going into the Sunday. Florida Atlantic will play the loser of this game in the elimination game, game one on Sunday. Columbia going home with two losses, losing earlier today against Florida Atlantic. Armstrong, Casala, Garastazu. Five, six, seven, due up against Michael Byrne. 
Byrne gave up a leadoff triple in the eighth inning to Ruben Samayan, then got the next three hitters. A line out to right, bouncer to first, and a pop up to the catcher. Armstrong, one for three. Home run, three RBIs, and the victory for the Dolphins on Friday night against FAU. Typical burn gets ahead of the count one two without throwing a pitch over 85 miles an hour. A lot of breaking stuff. <laughs> Runs the count full. This is critical right here. Big pitch in this ball game. He said you got Garrett Stasi up. You know Kevin O'Sullivan does not want to see him up there with a man on base. One out. For more coverage of the Division One baseball regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Burnson's giving up the triple. Has retired four in a row. Picks up his first strikeout. Singer in line for the win if Byrne can hold on. Here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Chris Hayes down from the third base coaching box. Byrne is now waiting. As we take a look, Byrne is on the mound waiting for the pinch hitter to come to plate. We take a look at the strikeout. Yeah, right around 90 miles an hour, but that's after a steady diet of some off-speed stuff around 79 to 80. That pitch looked like it was 95 in comparison. Had him set up with all the off-speed. Chris Gow coming to the plate. Gow, six hits on the season and 32 at-bats. Starting pitcher in game one of the Gainesville Regional for the Dolphins against Florida Atlantic. Went six and a third last night, gave up three runs, and earned the win his ninth on the season. Two strikes on Gow, hitting for Casella. And that's what Michael Byrne does, just keep a note on it. Starts you off with a strike and you're behind in the count. It's almost like you come up there 0 1 1. He's done this his whole career. Duran was set up outside. There's a the line for Gow and earning the win against Florida Atlantic. Center field. Horvath has a bead on it. Two away. And a big one to get here. Burn with two outs and the base is empty. Will face Corey Garastazu. He homered against Singer in the seventh inning. Pulling the Dolphins to within a run. Over 3,800 on hand here at McKeithen Stadium. Garastazu has also robbed Austin Langworthy of a home run tonight. Went over the fence and right, brought it back. Garastazzo's story is interesting. He was in Marshall at the fall. He graduated and through the gra graduate transfer rule. He ended up coming over to JU. This should do it. Bell. Ball game over. Florida picks up the victory against Jacksonville. The Gators 2 0. And onto the winner's bracket on Sunday. Well, that's the Gator victory with all the usual suspect stars Dalton Homer, India Homer, Duran, not a usual suspect with a big home run there. Great start by Brady Singer. And Michael Byrne closes it out in his Michael Byrne fashion. Gators in the driver's seat here in Gainesville. Singer.